what is up? Happy Sunday. Welcome to week four of Pause. For those of you who are just joining us this week, uh, my name is Kylie. Most of you guys know that already, but we are in a series called Pause. We've been looking at what it looks like for us to rest with God. And the summer is the perfect time to rest. And this summer is the perfect time to rest because most of us had things canceled and things aren't happening this summer. So we have been talking about resting with God creating time and space that we can lean into God because we are commanded and designed to rest. And this week we are wrapping up the series and the series title today is this. The series title is, It's Not About You. My parents used to say that to me all the time and now I get to say it to you guys. Pretty cool. So a question for you guys, have you ever tried to do something all by yourself that was created for a group to do? Have you guys ever had to do like a group project by yourself, even though you had a group or take on a task that was super massive, but you try to do it all by yourself? I was thinking about this question and thinking about two instances in my life that would be funny to try and do by myself. The first is, as some of you guys know, I spent a lot of summers in North Carolina working at a summer camp. And when we had the very rare day off, we would go whitewater rafting on the French Broad River. Super fun. And you would get in these huge inflatable boats and probably like six or eight people and a guide and you would you know, paddle and battle down these whitewater rapids. And I was thinking about how funny and very probably dangerous it would be if you made one person jump in this raft and try and battle the rapids down by themselves. It's an impossible or at least a very stupid task for one person to do. The second thing I was thinking of is, as some of you guys know, I've, I've been in the music industry for a long time now, and one of the things I love doing before a festival or before a show is watching the people build the stage. If you go to a big music show, like at a stadium or music festival, those stages aren't there, right? So you have hundreds of people, you have riggers and lighting techs and, um, people who are doing all of these different things that have to put together the stage and have to put together the sound and have to put together everything so that you can go and experience a show. And the riggers are my favorite because they climb them up on these poles and they're hooking lights and crazy. Anyway, if you ask one person to put together a stage, it would be impossible. Or maybe not impossible, but it would take them a year to make a stage where 10 pe- or 100 people can do it in an hour. See, we at times are not created to do big things by ourselves. We are created oftentimes to be in community and to use our gifts and our talents within that community to accomplish one major goal. We are created to be in the raft with all the people or to be creating a stage with all of our friends. We aren't created to take those tasks on alone. Today, as I said, is our final day talking about rest, and we're going to talk about how it's not always all about us. How sometimes we try and take on things that are made and created to be taken on by in a group. We're going to talk about how we can lean into our role in the group, and in doing so, we can find rest. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this series, for just all the things you've been teaching us and all of the rest we have been having and experiencing. And Lord, we thank you for being a God who finds us in the quiet and the silence. And as we think about this week, Lord, we ask that you would just teach us, that we would hear from you, Lord, that when we feel selfish or self-indulgent, that you would remind us that it's not always about us, but Lord, that it's about the community that you created us for. We thank you for being a God who is crazy massive, who is awesome, and who loves us. And we thank you for all that. In your name we pray. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I have noticed that one of the reasons why we are so busy is that we try and do everything ourselves. We see it almost as a badge of honor if we can muscle through these things in life that are really meant for groups. We think we're bigger and invincible, but we end up taking on too much, right? We end up feeling pressured and feeling stressed by all of the things we can take on. 
But the good news is that God hasn't created us to go through this life alone. He said he's created us to be in community. And it's when we lean into this community that we can find rest. We're going to be looking at a passage from Romans 12. Now, Romans is a book in the New Testament, often written or was written by Paul. Paul wrote a lot of the New Testament books, um, so you'll often see his name attached to a lot of the books. So this book is a book written to a church, and Paul writes about what it looks like for us to work as a full body, what it looks like for us to recognize that we are created by God, and that we are created to work in this community. So I'm going to be starting off in Romans 12. Again, it's a little bit of a lengthy passage, so stick with me. And also some of the language is a little funny, but we'll talk about that. So here's what Romans 12 says. It says, I, I being Paul, appeal to you, therefore, brothers or sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Again, I know that sounds weird. Stick with me. We're going to go through it. So here's what Paul continues. He says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you, uh, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, me being Paul, I being Paul, say to everyone among you to not think of himself or herself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. And then he goes on to list a few gifts. So Paul says, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches is his teaching, the one who exhorts is his exhorting, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who, who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Wow, Romans sometimes is very confusing. So what is happening here in Romans? It's a big chunk. But I think we can learn two things from this part of Romans. The first thing that we're going to talk about is how we can rest when we realize that we don't have to do everything ourselves. And we can rest by leaning into community. So those are the two things. Let's look at the first thing. This first thing that we read about from Paul is that Paul is telling us that and telling the church that we can rest and that we don't have to do everything by ourselves when we align ourselves with who God has created us to be. Here, again, is what Paul says. He says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. Now, let's be, we, let's be real. Some of this sounds weird, right? The language is kind of funky, and I get that. It is weird. But what Paul is telling us to do here, what Paul is showing us is that we can lean into who God created us to be. And in doing this, we don't have to carry the weight of defining ourselves. Paul uses language here that would have been familiar to the community he was writing to. And this language is talking about how the church back then can offer their bodies as living sacrifices. Now weird for us, right? But back then, people would have understood that when they entered into the temple, when they entered into the time of worship, they would have to sacrifice things in order to be accepted into the temple. Now, we know that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, so we don't have to do that. We can be in community with God. But what Paul is saying here is that we can be sacrifices to God in a way that allows us to lean into how God created us and who God created us to be in order to really understand who we are. That may be tricky, so let me break that down a little bit, right? God created each and every one of us to live and commune with God. And sometimes, as we talked about last week, we get too busy to do that. We get too distracted or we're worried about what God will think of us or how God will see us. Paul here tells us that we don't have to do that, that God loves us and that God wants to be with us and in community with us. And so we can sacrifice or give up this 
power, this struggle, this desire to create our own ideas about who we are and our own constraints about who we are. And we can live fully into who God is creating us to be. We can live into our identities as being sons and daughters of God rather than being these people who we're constructing ourselves to be. In fact, Paul tells us this after saying, be a living sacrifice. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So Paul says, you are a living sacrifice. You are God's and you can offer yourself back to God or you can offer yourself to God. So don't be conformed. Don't change your shirt to match the world, right? Don't change who you are because you feel like you have to fit in the world's box, but be transformed into who God has created you to be. This word transform that we see here is actually the Greek word, we're gonna get nerdy, the Greek word that they use for metamorphosis. It's like a, a butterfly that, or a caterpillar that changes into a butterfly, right? We can give up who we think we have to be and we can lean into who God has created us and in doing so we can free ourselves from feeling like we have to be conformed or we have to uh, identify with the world or what's around us. And instead we can lean into who God has created us to be. And in doing so, by leaning into who God has created us to be, we recognize that we are a part of a huge body of people working and living and loving God. Paul talks about that, right? So he talks about this first section of being transformed, renewed, and then he goes on to talk about how uh, people for in this body, we all have different gifts and we can use those gifts to be a part of the larger group. He talks about it as how one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So though many are, though we are many, we are also one in the body of Christ and individual members have these gifts that they bring to the body in order to be in community, in order to be together. Here's the cool thing, right? God has created each of us differently and uniquely. And if you're an intern, we've been talking about that, and I love seeing all of your gifts and talents, but everybody has gifts and talents. God has created diversity, not uniformity, and that's the mark of God's creation, diversity, not uniformity. And we can live into these gifts. We can lean into these gifts when we lean into God. And we can see the way that God has created us to live and work and fellowship within this community. We can use our different gifts so that we create one epic team. This conversation in Romans is also mirrored in Corinthians. And we talked about Corinthians a lot. How we have one body, but many different body parts. And they all work together for one thing. See, friends, by realizing that we can lean into who God wants us to be, and then realizing that who God wants us to be is also part of a bigger community, we strip away the need to be super hyper individuals. And instead we realize that we're a part of a bigger group and we can do things in that community. So we move from this mentality of it's about us to it's about all of us. It's about loving all the people that God created. It's about working for and living with and hanging out with all of God's community. Because it's no longer just about us. It's no longer about our own need to define who we are and define our ego and to create this box for us to live in. But rather, when we live into God and who God has created us to be, we can live into this bigger community, which is awesome right? We don't have to row that boat all by ourselves. We don't have to set up a music stage all by ourselves. We don't have to be alone. But when we recognize who God is wanting us to be, we can then recognize that God also wants us to be in this community. So guys, it's not about us. And one of the ways that we find rest is by realizing that we are working as a team with God and for God. We don't have to take all the projects on by ourselves. We don't have to control everything by ourselves. But rather we can lean into God and lean into our community and find rest when we do that. So here's the challenge for this week. A lot of us are spending time with our families, whether we want to or not. 
It's just the reality of the time. And some of us may be spending time with some of our social bubble friends as well. What I want you to do this week is I want you to think of one way that a family member or a friend can help you with something this week. And then I want you to ask them to help you. It can be as simple as, hey, I'm kind of feeling sad. Can you pray for me? It can be something simple. Or maybe you want to cook dinner for your family and you need your siblings to help. Or maybe you want to put together like an art project for your family and you want your siblings to help. But I want you to plug into the community that God has around you this week. Your challenge is to think of creative ways to plug into that community so that you realize that it's not always about us that we can find rest when we rest in our identity with God and when we rest in our community. We're going to be talking about small groups, so make sure you do your challenge, and I will see you guys in small groups.